Hey Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. Let's dive straight into today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Tossaway345, who says, Am I the arsehole for revoking my wife's access to my car? I, 36 male, love my wife, 32 female. She's awesome. Our relationship is solid, but she's a very different person than I am. I am, by nature, an organized and process-orientated person. I work as a project manager and my life is focused around structure, planning, deadlines, etc. My wife is the opposite. She's a creative type with a great career in advertising. Nothing about her life is organized. Everything is haphazard and somewhat chaotic. But this is what makes her good at her job. I understand and accept that and have done since I fell in love with her. We're different and that's a huge part of her awesomeness. She is cool and exciting and brought new things to my life. I love that. The issue, we both have cars. My car is newer and has better tech, but they are similar. But I keep my car clean and tidy all the time. Her car is a mess, garbage, empty coffee cups, shit rolls around when driving, etc. She hates dealing with it. And because my car is nicer than hers, she prefers to use my car. Three weeks ago, she's going to a friend's place up in the woods. Five hours drive for a girl's weekend. I'm going out for the weekend skiing, three and a half hours away. We're both leaving at the end of work Friday at 4 p.m. My wife is done and she leaves, love and kisses, etc. When I finish at 7.30 p.m., I'm antsy to get going. I go to load my gear, but when I get outside, my car is gone and hers is on the driveway. I thought, what the fuck? Did she take my car? I call her and we have a fight because I am pissed. I have a ski rack on my roof and the gear doesn't really fit in her car, but she's already three hours into her trip up north. I don't want to ruin her weekend by making a big deal about this, so I suck it up. There's no gas in her tank, as usual, so I get gas and as I leave the gas station, I get pulled over. I'm just fucking pissed at this point. Cop asks for license and registration, which I'm already looking for and can't find. There's tons of papers and receipts and all sorts of random shit in the glove box and center console. I can't find it. The cop says, I pulled you over because your license plate tags are expired. Cop says, the vehicle is registered to wife's name of previous apartment address. She hasn't updated her registration. And the cop continues to say, there's also unpaid citations on this vehicle. I have to inform you that I am impounding this vehicle. The cop writes up a ticket, calls a tow truck and tows it to the pound. Since then, we have a couple of huge fights about this. I feel that she needs to be more organized, starting with keeping her car legal. To force the issue, I've revoked my wife's usage privileges of my car until such a point we're on more of an equal footing, and she is mad about it. I'm not prepared to budge on it until she takes care of her car situation. So give it to me straight. Am I being an asshole about the car? Now, I've got to say, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm wrong on this now, but... I feel like she has no right to be mad at you about it. Of course you want to take away the privileges using your car when you have to go through that. You miss, I'm assuming you missed your ski trip because of this as well. I mean, let's round this up. She gave you that filthy car to begin with, didn't even consider your trip at all, left you with no fuel. There was tickets on the car, the expired plates, which I'm not sure how that works, but <laughs> I'm assuming that's real bad. And just no permission to take your car to begin with. You know, that's absolutely awful and I would be furious with that. But then for her to try and turn this around on you as well, holy moly, I, it sounds like she's just being hugely irresponsible in this. But Abiyita says, not the arsehole, wow, she really screwed you over. How can she even be mad at you? She should be apologizing. OP replies saying, okay, to be fair, she did apologize profusely when she found out what happened. She's not mad at me per se. I think she's mostly mad at the situation and probably a bit embarrassed, but yeah, it did seriously screw me over. Affectionate Ice says, not the arsehole. Curious as to your wife's point of view though. She took your car without asking, probably to avoid the noping and you end up missing your weekend because of her car and she's mad because she has to use her own car now. OP replies saying, yep, she uses my car all the time and I'm totally fine with it because we're a team and we share everything. She says she simply didn't think about it and I'm inclined to believe her. 
because that's true to her character. It's not really an excuse, but she's not the type to deliberately do something secretively that she's known I will disagree with. She's pretty open and we communicate well. In this situation, she fucked up and she knows it, but it's prompted a bigger conversation between us about her being a lot more responsible. And I kind of don't get that. I might be overlooking something here, but I just don't get how she's not thinking about it like OP says there. Like, I mean, she uses your car because her car is an absolute shithole. The thought process is already there and she must have known you was going on a trip of some sort. So I, I just don't get that. Crock of Pot says, whoa, not the arsehole. The issue isn't the car. It's trust. It's really, really bad that she let you unknowingly drive around in a car she couldn't keep legal. It's human to mess up paperwork sometimes, but you getting busted for her mistakes should have been a major come to Jesus moment for your wife. Hope you reply saying, yep, exactly right. That is what's happening now. It's lucky that nothing serious happened. If there had been an accident, that could have been very bad from a liability perspective. And one more comment from Respect Dawn, who says not the arsehole. Um, you guys need to have a talk about her possibly seeing someone for an ADHD assessment. The picture you painted of her and the issue she's having, with the needs with not getting essential things done for the car, are sort of screaming out, out of control ADHD to me. This is important because if it's ADHD, it's at a point where it's having a damaging impact on her relationship with you and causing legal issues. And it's not something she's going to be able to deal with without knowledge, help and tools. Even if she won't go for a diagnosis, you might want to start reading up on it so you can get an understanding for yourself. It doesn't matter how many serious talks you have with her about this if she doesn't have the internal wiring to build more acceptable habits. Seriously, this could be a mental health slash disability thing if she knows that's what it is rather than some sort of moral or character failing. It could be a real relief to both of you. Sincerely, an ADHD woman who once went a year and a half with expired tags. So then OP comes in with the update eight months later, which says a lot has happened in the past eight months. This issue really opened up a huge can of worms that I am having a hard time knowing what I want to do moving forward with. Bear with me, this is long. So here's what happened since this post. Important context, we never joined our finances. We have separate bank accounts where pay goes into and a joint account that we both put our monthly funds to cover joint expenses. And it's been working fine for years. We also have separate accounts for things like cell phones, car insurance and other stuff we had before we got together. Retrieval of her car. I've never had a car towed before, so didn't really know what to do. And holy shit, this was a complete shit show. I called the number for the impound lot and they informed me that before I could get the car back, we needed to pay off all the citations and get the car compliant, etc. Of course, the DMV doesn't open till Monday, so I'm without a car all weekend. Monday, we go to the DMV to sort this out. I find out that there are 47 unpaid tickets for my wife's car, going back for almost two years, which cost over $1,500 to clear out. I was dumbfounded. I almost exploded and asked, what the fuck is going on here? And she basically started crying, saying she knew it was an issue, but didn't realize it was this bad. She didn't have enough money to pay for the tickets because her credit card is maxed out, which was news to me too. She has a 10K credit limit on her card, so I paid it off. Then we tried to change her registration from her old address to our address, which prompted a whole other issue. Her insurance has lapsed. I didn't know this either, so we had to get on with her insurance company to get that sorted out. While going through this process, I discovered that her premium was literally four times more than mine, and they insisted on full payment up front for the 12-month period, which was $4,800. To get everything complete and the car to be released took three days. Then we went to the pound to get the car. $375 towing fee, plus a 90 day per day storage fee, so $825 needing payment. Again, I had to pay because she couldn't afford it. We get home and I am just fuming. This just cost me $7,000 in a few days. Our first real fight. After we get home from picking up the car, I'm just beyond frustrated and angry at this entire situation and need to have clearing of the grievances with her. This blew up over four hours to the biggest fight we've ever had. I thought we'd had fights before, but this was different. It was a relationship existential. It really opened my eyes to the real issue. That being, I actually don't really know who she is anymore. 
So many skeletons come out of the closet in this four hour roller coaster of emotions. And here's the highlight a money situation. I was surprised that her credit card was maxed out. It has a 10K limit. She makes great money, about 25K more annually than I do. So a lack of money was unexpected. Then I asked her how much debt does she have in total. At this point, I know of the 10K credit card debt I learned about a few days beforehand. I learned that she has six credit cards. All of them are basically maxed out. Total credit card debt is 24,000, all with high interest. She also has three store cards, all maxed out. Total store card debt is $2,500. I also learned that she had a line of credit for 18,000, also maxed out. She also owes two various friends and family members, about $8,000. Her total debt is $52,000. She makes the monthly minimum payments only on everything. At this point, I am shocked and reeling. I can't believe it. I feel physically sick. I didn't know about any of this and I'm at a total loss as to why I don't know. I don't even know who she is anymore. We've been married two years, together for five and a half years. When we moved from dating to a relationship, we had a pretty big talk about core values and what was important to be aligned on before getting really involved. Obviously, things like being exclusive are key. I also said that financial security and being debt-free are very important to me. I made some stupid decisions in my early 20s that hurt me financially and had to work hard to get out from under that. I said I have three pillars that I wanted to build a future with her on. These were deal breakers. If she's not 100% on board, then we shouldn't continue dating because I was falling in love and I didn't want to go further unless there was a future. Cheating in any form is a deal breaker. Financial irresponsibility is a deal breaker. Family, I want to have kids. I reminded her of this in the fight and she said that I have come on too strong at that point about financial irresponsibility. She already had most of the debt at that point and decided to not say anything at that moment, which she acknowledged was a mistake because she thought I would have broken up with her there and then. Then she kept hiding it because she wanted to try and rectify it before I found out, but she couldn't. She also pointed out that I never asked her about her financial situation, which is true. I didn't, so that was where we were. At this point, I was pretty upset and I had to leave the house. So I left and went to stay at a friend's house for the night, which ended up being a couple of weeks in the end. The next morning when I woke up, I felt devastated. I had to take some time off work because I couldn't think straight. I kept racking my brains to understand how this happened. How did I not know? How did I not see the signs or evidence? I felt betrayed. It was like I'd been cheated on, but somehow worse. I couldn't bring myself to speak to her for the first few days because I was so upset and slash or angry. I'm not usually a very emotional person, so this was difficult to process. I would go from rage to tears to rage to despair in a few minutes. I didn't trust myself around anyone to not be a raging asshole. She was blowing up my phone, asked me to talk to her and come home, but I couldn't. Eventually, I asked my friend to call her and tell her to give me some space and time, which she did. But later on that day, I had her brother and both parents also reach out to me to see if they could speak. I politely declined and said I need time. Obviously, she was going through a tough time too and reached out to them for help. The last six months have been hard, but we're working through it. We're both committed to that, but I'm still struggling with the enormity of the situation. I still can't help feeling betrayed. I have lost a lot of trust in her, but we're in couples therapy to get through this. She's trying really hard to make it work, correct her mistakes, and work on being a more organized and reliable person. I see that. She's made some real major changes in how she runs her finances. She's taken debt counseling sessions and is following those teachings quite diligently. And being really transparent with her situation. In the last six months, she's consolidated all the cards into one loan and cancelled all her old cards. The debt is down to 14k since this all started. This is all super positive, so I'm hopeful this has a good ending. And I gotta be honest, I'm not really sure how I feel about that ending. I'm, I'm happy for them that you know they're building their relationship because only truly they know what they have. I feel like the lack of trust in this after what happened would be really, really damaging and hard to come back from. And perhaps I'm being too harsh there. I, I, I get that. But it's, re it's really one of those ones. I think it'd be really difficult to know how you feel unless you're in that situation, what you actually have and how they're 
how that person's acting around you. I mean, getting that debt down from 50k to 14k is a pretty massive leap. And they did sound like they had something really nice before all this started. But, you know, just losing that trust like that, having all that stuff hidden away, it's got to be really damaging and hard to come back from. But I do wish them the best for the future. What do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Let's move on to another story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account who says, am I the asshole for uninviting my sister-in-law and mother-in-law from everything and saying that if my husband continues to pressure me, will also be uninvited i'm seven months pregnant with my first child the baby is also the first grandchild slash nephew of my husband's family which everyone is excited about i lost my mother and father to the pandemic being an only child so there's not much of my family since the death of my parents one year ago my husband's family has welcomed me with open arms as part of them and i have become very close to my mother-in-law and sister-in-law I've always wanted to have a gender reveal and I trusted my sister-in-law to organize everything about this. With three days to go before the party, I started to receive messages from all of my husband's relatives and even close friends congratulated me on my baby being a boy. I went to ask what happened. My sister-in-law confessed that she let it slip to my mother-in-law and she told everyone the sex of the baby after knowing because she couldn't hold it and, and it took proportions beyond what they imagined. Nobody called me to tell me this. The party was cancelled and I was heartbroken, as well as extremely hurt by the two of them. Usually they accompanied me to the ultrasound, shopping for the baby room and, and my mother-in-law would stay at the time of delivery. But after this breach of trust, I stopped inviting them and asked them to respect my boundaries when they pressured me to go. Honestly, I didn't even send them the baby shower invite because I really avoided contact with them as much as possible. Because everyone knew before me that it was a boy. My husband started complaining that I was pushing them away because of a mistake that could happen and I was being harsh. Yesterday, he brought up this and when I said that I still didn't feel comfortable with them, he said, soon you'll tell me that my mother won't be able to go to the birth. I think my face showed my response and he started saying I was being too hard on her because she was just excited and blah blah. I had my limit and said, if you keep pushing me, it won't just be your mother who won't be on my labor. So either stop or you won't come in. He started to say I was crossing lines and that he had a right to have this moment. I was taking this too far. He slept on the couch and doesn't want to talk to me more than necessary. Am I the arsehole? Well, many are saying it's just a gender reveal. I honestly don't care for that and I think it's tacky, but my mum was the type who likes slash love it and she always dreamed of having grandchildren. She said she was made to be a grandmother. She can't meet my son or even though I'm pregnant, so, so I wanted to do something tacky that I don't care for her, not for me. Everyone knows the importance and the reason. I always wanted to have a gender reveal with my mum there and I didn't have either. And we'll start off with Dry Dragon Fruit 4191 who says, My husband started complaining that I was pushing them away because of a mistake that could happen and that I was being harsh. And says, This wasn't a mistake. This was a choice. Your sister-in-law made a choice and told mother-in-law. Mother-in-law then made a choice to tell everyone else in the family. Your husband is making the choice to pressure you into things, which is leaving you to make some choices of your own now. You're allowed to make your own choices. Nobody, not even the husband, has a right to be in the delivery room. It may seem harsh, but it's true. The person going through the procedure has the choice of who gets to be in there. Birthing a child is not an all-access pass for everybody else who wants to be in there. It's not a spectator sport. It's a medical procedure to get a little human out of another human not the arsehole. Song of Insanity says, your sister-in-law slipping could have been an honest mistake. Your mother-in-law spreading it around was a concise choice. You may be going a little too far with your sister-in-law, again, possible accident, but your mother-in-law made her choice and is now dealing with the consequences, not the arsehole. Opie replies saying about the slip up, that's okay, but from what I understand, it happened the night before and at no time did she come talk to me, talk about what happened. I found out from others the sex of my baby and I went after her to ask. If she had slipped up and called to let me know sometime after she did, I wouldn't have been so upset. And Tiger Jacket replies that saying, I think anyone would be upset. You can't unring a bell. You are still grieving your parents. You are happy and sad at the same time. It's confusing. I got pregnant with my son within a month of my father dying from the pandemic. Baby is almost one and a half now and he's so amazing. 
I still get heartache though about my dad not being here and not meeting him. So the gender reveal was special to you because you were doing it in a way to connect with your mother. Tell mother-in-law and sister-in-law I'm grieving my parents' deaths. I miss them so much and it's hard knowing they'll never see me as a mother and never know the baby. The only reason I wanted a gender reveal is because it is something my mother would have loved and you ruined it. It hurts because I'll never get it back and my chance to feel close to my mum is gone. I need some space. I hope I can feel the same closeness to you as I did before this happened. That's what I want and I want my baby to have a life with extended family in it. I'm not ready. I'm so sad. This is how I feel. Please stop talking to husband about it. I need his support. I'll reach out when I'm ready but for now I need to handle things on my own. And we'll have one more from Bitter Conflict who says not the arsehole. Your husband is a huge arsehole for thinking mummy's excitement is a higher priority than the woman who is actually pregnant. It sounds like your husband is using you as a surrogate to give mummy and sissy a new toy. No way should his mother be at that birth. It is your medical procedure and the only priority is keeping you and babe safe and healthy. It is not a dinner theater where your husband is entitled to sell tickets to the show. Now, what do you guys make of this one? How would you advise OP to navigate the situation? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. Now, just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, support, and time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so much for being involved. It's just mind-blowing. Thank you so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love. Wake up, get up, stretch my legs. Eat some breakfast, milk and eggs. Brush my teeth up, wash my face. Throw my clothes on, start my day. Wake up, I can smell the smoke from the bacon. Let's go, see the sun shining from the windows. Okay, I know that's a damn...